As Prime Minister Narendra Modi concluded his Russia visit, the meltdown in the West and Europe has been for all to see. Ukraine said the visit is a huge blow to the peace efforts and Russia responded saying Zelensky is the president of war. Now, the NATO summit is underway as we speak and India continues to stand firm on its stand of peace, refusing to be bulldozed into taking sides. Watch this special report on the power tussle that India has caught in. As leaders of NATO's 32 member countries converge in the United States to celebrate 75 years of the military alliance, all eyes are on the Russia-Ukraine war and the alliance's policy towards China. But ahead of the summit, the world's focus was on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Russia. The diplomacy ruffled feathers in the West and Ukraine. While President Volodymyr Zelensky said that it was a blow to the peace efforts, United States urged India to make it clear to Russia that it respects the UN Charter and Ukraine's territorial integrity. In a sharp response, Russia's charged their affairs in India, Roman Babushkin called the comments nonsense, calling Zelensky the president of war. Zelensky is the president of war, so well, he he retains his power because so well, he he is uh, you know keeps fighting Russia and keeps supplying keeps receiving the support from the West. So well, and uh, he is uh, not interested in stopping the war because actually when he stops, so his legitimacy will be under the question because actually his tenure was over in March. So well, and uh, he has to conduct the elections. For India, which has maintained a clear and independent stand on the war, the tussle between the West and Russia has been a diplomatic tightrope that it has walked on since February 2022. You know, somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours, it is me, it's ours. From Prime Minister Modi meeting President Zelensky on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Italy this year, to sitting next to President Putin at the Kremlin and talking about the loss of innocent lives, India has refused to be bullied into taking sides in this war. However, the question is, till when? Can India be the perfect mediator to stop the war? How much will the China-Russia relationship influence the India-Russia equation? And will India be able to stand tall amid mounting pressure as the world heads towards Cold War era-like blocks? Only time will tell. All right, let's talk more about this. On the broadcast, I'm joined by Ray Locker, senior journalist and author from America. I'm also joined by former ambassador Veena Sikri. Good evening and namaskar to both of you. Ray, let me start with you. Uh, you know, we had uh, all of these comments and remarks coming in from the United States, from the Ukrainian president, from European countries on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Russia. But I want to ask you, isn't that hypocritical of United States to be saying and urging other countries should stop this war while also supplying weapons to Russia, to Ukraine in this war? Well, not necessarily. I mean, yes, the United States is often hypocritical on the world stage. I mean, we've seen that for you know, decades. But I mean, Ukraine Ukraine is defending itself. We're supplying weapons to a country that's defending itself. Whereas other countries giving weapons to Russia are supplying weapons to a country that attacked a neighboring sovereign nation. That's simple to me anyway. Now, I can understand why people don't agree with, you know, some of the U.S. attitudes toward India and Prime Minister Modi meeting with Putin. You know, that's a totally different thing. To me, you supply weapons to Ukraine because Ukraine is defending itself. It's not like we gave weapons to Ukraine and Ukraine invaded Russia, which is the opposite of what happened. Okay, let me ask you then, Ray. Uh, 
you know, if, if even if I consider what you're saying as a justification of what's happening in the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, then when does Ukraine get the NATO membership? One of the main reasons why this war actually erupted. Why hasn't the United States and the EU and the entire NATO come to a conclusion when Ukraine will be given the NATO membership? Well, I can't answer that specifically, but I know that one of the risks of being having Ukraine as a NATO member is the whole attitude of NATO as an attack on one as an attack on all. So if Ukraine is then a NATO member and gets attacked, then NATO members are obliged to intervene on Ukraine's behalf. And look, no, nobody in the United States wants U.S. troops to be fighting in Ukraine against Russia. That that you know crosses a line. I think that leads to a wider war, possibly a nuclear war, and nobody wants that. It's much better to, in the U.S. interest to supply Ukraine the weapons it needs to defend itself and draw the line there. Anything else, uh, I don't think would have any kind of U.S. support. Ambassador Veena Sikri, let me understand from you, how do you see this, ma'am, uh, just the fact that, uh, you know, India has had a very clear, independent and rather mature stand when we've navigated our way through this war. But when will the world understand that India has its own foreign policy and we will stand by it? Well, I think um, India's foreign policy is based uh, squarely on strategic autonomy. This is something that India is ve it's very dear to India's heart that we maintain our strategic autonomy and maintain our relations with all countries of the world. And I think it is um, a thin one on that those countries that have good relations and strong relations with all countries of the world are in a better position to talk to all these countries and find a possible solution uh, out of the imbroglio that is now going on. I think it is very well known that uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi met uh, President Zelensky uh, on the sidelines of the G G7 meeting in Italy just a couple of weeks ago. And now he is, he is meeting President Putin. Uh, this is the 22nd annual summit between uh, India and Russia. So something that is very well established, something that is in uh, keeping with the traditions of uh, Indian foreign policy and India's bilateral relationship uh, with Russia, which is a very, very long standing. So I think that it is a, it is a, it is a continuation of this relationship. Certainly when these summits take place, all issues are discussed. And it is known that uh, uh, during the private dinner on the first day, of uh, Prime Minister Modi's visit on uh, on on July the eighth, uh, this was discussed. Our Prime Minister has conveyed very strongly that uh, the result of this uh, uh, the problem cannot be found on the battlefield. There has to be a process of dialogue and diplomacy. There has to be a peacemaking process. And I think this is very important because if if the world, the countries of the world want a solution to the problem, they have to get everybody around the table. They have to get everybody to the same table and not seek to isolate or make yeah. any one of the participants um, as a pariah or, or, or unacceptable. So I think this is very much um, uh, the, the visit was a successful visit, a very successful visit. All issues were discussed, the bilateral economic relationship, the trade relationship, the security relationship, all these issues were discussed. The, tra the transport corridors uh, on the eastern sector, western sector, in the north, in the Arctic, all these were discussed. So yeah. These are very important aspects of uh, India's relationship with Russia, uh, which uh, uh, are discussed in such detail regularly. So I uh, I, I fully agree with what you're saying that uh, uh, we will- Clearly, clearly ma'am, reflecting the fact that, uh, you know, India will first see its own interests before it is, uh, uh, it thinks about other considerations. But Ray, uh, you know, I want to understand from you the Western perspective, the countries that are supporting Ukraine in this war, that perspective. Why is it necessary for countries around the world to take sides in this war? Why can't you have a side that says we want peace and we want both the countries to talk to each other because dialogue is the only way forward? Well, I agree with that, and I agree with it, what the ambassador has said about India's strategic needs in this case, and in all cases. I mean, I don't think anybody in the U.S. State Department looks at India and says that it's doing something wrong. I mean, clearly, it's the most populous nation in the world. It has to take its own interests into account. And it's a good thing that Prime Minister Modi is meeting with Putin and trying to talk him into some kind of peace deal. I mean, in terms of taking sides, to me, the issue is clear. Russia attacked an independent sovereign nation. That's a bad thing. 
I mean, so if you stand up and say, that's not something we support, that seems logical to me. I know why India is doing what it's doing. It has relationships with Russia and other nations around the world. It gets a lot of oil from Russia and natural ga gas. So it wants to take care of its economic best interests. And I think we're all grownups here, and certainly in the United States and in the State Department, we know that India has to do what's best for India. And you know there are things that we would like I don't think anybody is insisting that India has to do what the United States wants, which is probably something different than what the way things used to be, that's for sure. Yes, clearly India has charted a new foreign policy uh, and a rather independent and clear one at that. But Ambassador Sikri, you know, the fact that Prime Minister Narendra Modi first went to Russia and now is in Austria as we speak, uh, also reflects the kind of significance that it holds amid the Russia-Ukraine war. And I want to quote um, uh, Chancellor Neymar when he said that it, is, it was important to get Prime Minister Modi's assessment about the intentions of Russia concerning the peace process. You know, United States has also said that it would like countries like India to be the mediator to urge Russia to stop this war. Do you think India can play a successful role when it comes to mediating through this war and eventually leading it to its uh, logical end? Um, you know, India, I must make it clear, I don't think India is seeking any kind of mediating role, uh, not at all. But th the fact that India has these good positive relations with Russia, and as you said, in Austria also, because Austria's views on this issue are uh, slightly different uh, from the rest of the EU. So I think that, uh, you know, this, this and, he, and Austria is not a member of NATO as uh, either. So I think that the fact that a country which is able to talk frankly and freely to all sides, as I said to President Zelensky and to President Putin, uh, that that country would have a very good assessment of where the situation is now. And if at all there's an interest from all sides, and I think there should be an interest on all sides, because the situation has gone on far too long. Too many lives have been lost. Our prime minister himself expressed his sorrow and grief at the loss of life of the children who died in that uh, attack yesterday. But the uh, Russian government has said that that was not caused by their missile, but by another missile. So I think that the, the seriousness of the situation is very, very important to us. But at the same time, we will, of course, be talking to Russia about our economic interests, whether it is fertilizers or fuel or other things. But we are very concerned about bringing an end to the situation. If at all in the future uh, uh, a situation arises, I think India will be more than ready to put its best foot forward. But I must make it very clear that we're not seeking any uh, mediating role. We have never done that and we've never, but, but, we have seen many situations across the world mm. where India has been very usefully played such a role. Yeah. Uh, Ray, you know, the NATO summit is underway in the United States and there are expectations that there, there will be something solid that comes out of it regarding the war. What are your expectations, really? Do you think it's going to be more unified this time around? There's going to be uh, more talk about when Ukraine can get that NATO membership and more help for Ukraine? Well, I think they'll definitely talk about more help for Ukraine. I think the fact that the United States finally got its Ukraine aid package in order in the last few months is helpful for mm -hmm. that. And so uh, I think we'll see more of that. I don't know about any kind of uh, NATO membership timetable for Ukraine. Um, I think it's probably premature to do that right now. I don't think anything happens on that front until after some kind of resolution to the war. And I don't think the war can be resolved, you know, by NATO, de uh, you know, scaling down its support. I mean, that would put Russia at a more advantageous, advantageous position. And I don't think anybody wants that. I also don't think anybody believes that this war is going to be won on the battlefield, certainly not by Ukraine. Um, so at best, NATO is fighting to keep things at the status quo in the hopes that somebody can help broker a deal between the two countries. Um, and you know, maybe India is that country. I don't know. You know, it's not seeking that, but it certainly has growing clout in the world. And I think that's... Uh, to the credit of Prime Minister Modi for meeting with all these people. He's playing a very valuable role. And I think it's a sign of growth of India on the world stage that it's really not beholden to anyone, not a former colonial power or any kind of European government. And that's a healthy thing. Sure. 
Uh, with that, Ambassador Sikri, let me also understand from you then, you know, there is, of course, the Russia-China bonhomie that we've seen uh, in the past, uh, and now, of course, it's strengthening with this war. We're also seeing the U.S. and its allies come together in a more unified way to deal with Russia. Uh, but how do you see India's relationship with these two seemingly, uh, you know, formed blocks now, seemingly heading towards a Cold War era-like situation where we have two blocks? How do you see India really maintaining the relationship with both sides? You know, India is firmly committed to multipolarity. We have said this as, as part of our uh, uh, foreign policy based on strategic autonomy. We also believe that the world to be a peaceful place has to maintain a multipolarity. And so we do not believe that the G2 concept, you know, of China and USA, and this was a a concept put across uh, in the in the U by China some years back, but I think that increasingly in the U.S. there is uh, not been a kind of uh, ready acceptance of this formula. But now in in the recent weeks, some people have started talking about it again. But from our point of view, we're very clear that we do not see the world as a G2 at all. We do see a, a multipolar world as one that will ensure peace and security and prosperity for everybody, because everybody will get their economic development and and. And, and peace and prosperity from wherever they feel is the most appropriate. And so I think that uh, I think that the way to go is for a multipolar world. I know that China is now, you know, Russia feels more dependent uh, on China because Ambassador, of Ambassador Sikri, how much do you think the China influence would impact this? No, I think China is very clearly interested in G2. They, they would like very much uh, to have their own area of influence. But at the same time, they do realize that India is not going to be part of any G2. So they themselves are talking about, uh, you know, a, a third pole, uh, what they call a very interesting phrase has come up as a coalition of the unwilling, that people who are not in either one or the other are going to be. This is the global south. The global south today is just not interested in a G2 world. They're not interested in, you know, in like the old Cold War. They're not in, interested in a second edition of the Cold War. They're interested in their own prosperity and development for their own people. And they would like to get it from different places, different aspects. Economic can be with one country for one sector, with another okay. country for another sector. It can be a multi-trade relationship. India itself is trying to do FTAs with the Eurasian group, with the European Union group, uh, with other groups. So it's, it's, it's a different yeah. world. So I think that uh, if we work towards that okay. world where everybody can follow their interests, but we can come together on important issues of peace and security and uh, bringing it into war, whether it is um, Russia, Ukraine, whether it is Hamas, Israel. There's so many, you know, um, uh, absolute spots that are burning yeah. across the world that we get very worried about it. But it must be in a multipolar context. And this is All what right. is get, getting more and more uh, acceptance right. as we go across in, in talks with different countries. Yeah. Sure, let's see how that pans out and how what really comes off the NATO summit that's happening. I'll wrap it up here. Ambassador Veena Sikri and Ray Locker, thank you very much to both of you for joining us on Nation tonight and sharing your perspective. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.